Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us uh, start this lecture uh, with a thought process from Charles R. Swindoll. Uh, the difference between something good and something great is attention to detail. And of course, the attention is very important for doing something good and uh, uh, not only the good but also the great. <coughs> so, um, in the last lecture, we basically looked at how to uh, um, uh, handle the flame uh, flame height of a two dimensional jet diffusion flame and uh, today we will be looking at uh, how we can uh, how it has been extended by roper uh, the analysis of the bulk skewman but i won't be getting into the detail of the analysis which will uh, quite lengthy in nature and what i will be doing will be uh, looking at uh, you know giving the final result so and then which we can use it roper in 1970 extended this burskuman model which i had discussed earlier by varying the velocity to vary along the axial direction in uh, actually in the burskuman model we use that velocity won't change along the uh, axial direction means y direction in that which is not true right so therefore that was a fallacy in that so, he has extended that and he has uh, uh, he extended this work also for the circular port and then square port and other things right. So, let us uh, circular port if you look at <coughs> this is uh, the analysis what he did right uh, the final relationship we uh, got that is this one right which is having q f divided by t f and t f right and this is of course, the um, uh, 4 pi d infinity this is your diffusivity and uh, and l n 1 plus uh, 1 over nu and t infinity divided by t f t f is your mean flame temperature right and uh, the t f if you look at is the fuel stream temperature because the stream temperature may change right and uh, t infinity is the ambient temperature whatever it will be there right at the oxidizer side right and uh, d infinity is the mean diffusion coefficient evaluated generally for the oxidizer side this is the diffusivity right and this is of course the theoretical by roper right and they uh, also looked at this expression and tried to couch the experimental data and come up with a relationship like that hf hf is the flame length or uh, flame height whatever you call it is having a constant this is basically a constant right and uh, qf and t infinite by tf and tf is the fuel mainstream temperature ln 1 plus 1 by nu so, they have written the similar ex this thing, but however, they match a constant to match the experimental data, you know that is all I can say, right. Uh, and then in the process, they have eliminated this diffusivity and then this term, the coefficients also, that is a simplification they have done. So, uh, for the square port, however, they have uh, looked at uh, in a little, uh, a little com uh, you know similar uh, they have uh, arrived at this relationship with flame height similar only thing they have put it something inverse error function here and uh, this is the similar in nature and uh, if you look at the coefficient looks to be same for both the circular and the square they have written and uh, the constant is very different right uh, from the experimental data and uh, they have also extended this uh, for the various fuel kind of things right which is uh, they are plotted with the flame height versus the volumetric uh, flow rate in centimeter cube 
and uh, you can see that very interesting thing you can see this is the circular port right and when you talk about uh, this uh, slot kind of one this slot this is b by h it can be 2 right uh, and it can be 5 it can be 20 it can be 1 if it is 1 it is a square right kind of thing and you can see that uh, the as this uh, aspect ratio or the slot h by d increases the flame length becoming very very small as compared to circular when it will be twice you know kind of thing h is uh, twice of that b you will get particularly at the higher flow rate the flame height increases right and um, actually uh, what they have found it is a linear uh, dependence on the flow rate for a circular port and linearity of course depends on the sl slot burners right and they say that these flames are basically dominated by buoyancy because the frown number is small and uh, this is basically h f h f uh, becomes shorter for same flow rate uh, when the h by b uh, or a h by b is decreasing this is basically b right <coughs> so what i was telling they have also looked at uh, the factors that affecting the stoichiometric right and um, the stoichiometric is basically mole of ambient a uh, fluid by the moles of number fluid at the stoichiometric ratio it depends on the chemical composition and also the surrounding fluid surrounding fluid generally it will be air but you can have some different thing as well right you can uh, because whenever you are using coaxial jets you can use that uh, uh, for example new would be different for pure burning in air as compared to nitrogen diluent fuel burning in air or some other like helium some other thing you can also dilute right and uh, the various uh, fuel one can think of hydrocarbons let us say like methane ethane propane butane a hydrogen and carbon dioxide comes over here and this is the relative flame height with respect to the methane right and versus the new mole fraction there so it looks to be very very linear kind of things and they are getting and uh, um, because of fact that what they are attributing that this is a new which will be uh, uh, depend on that what is the n and m because n if you look at for methane for methane uh, basically n is equal to 1 m m is equal to 4 right and for propane butane it will be you know as it goes on ethane it will be 2 and m will be uh, 8 uh, 2 4 no 6 kind of things right uh, for ethane n is equal to 2 and m is equal to 6 it will be go on increasing so therefore new will be it will be uh, changing right c 3 h 8 s c ratio that is the which will be affecting 2.6 and then flame is about 2.5 times as long as the methane like if you look at propane right so as it is changing then this thing will be changing so uh, therefore the flame height will be goes on increasing when the hydrocarbon become higher hydrocarbons being used one can also look at it say the it will be diffusivity also will be playing a role because it's a heavier fuel right it will take more time to pass uh, go through and mix that so that is also another uh, way of looking but right so flame length basically increases with sc ratio of uh, as the sc ratio of the fuel decreases that is the thing what they have found out <coughs> so we will take an example and we will be using in this uh, basically uh, how to use the roper's formula for calculating the flame height uh, laminar butane gas jet is issued from a tube into air right as a flame height of 10 centimeter right so uh, let us say this is a is there and that flame is given and this height h f is given as basically 10 centimeter right and we will have to find out to find volumetric flow rate I can say V dot uh, basically 
and you will have to find out heat release rate heat release rate I can say H R heat release rate right and that is the first part but then what happen we will have to also find out H F when the diameter of the tube is increased by 25 percent and velocity decrease by the 25 percent what will be the flame height right and take the heat of combustion of the butane we have taken uh, 45,000 kilo joule per kg and T adiabatic we are taking 2300 Kelvin. So, uh, if you look at we are basically we will be using the the Roper's formula solution uh, by using Roper's formula right and uh, keep in mind that this is experimental right we are not using theoretical value we will get H F is equal to 1330 V dot F T infinity T F divided by L n 1 plus nu right. In this case T F is given right and um, actually this is given if you look at this is given H F is given right and uh, the we will have to find out basically T F is given and we will have to find out nu right uh, and then you will have to find out basically the V not F. So, if you look at what we will be doing we will be uh, looking at the stoichiometric mixtures right. Uh, the stoichiometric mixtures uh, for the uh, butane this is the butane gas right. So, C 4 H 10 plus I can write down uh, plus 79 by 21 N 2 right is going to the carbon dioxide and it will be getting to the water and it will be getting also the 3.76 N 2. So, if you just do that balance I will be having 4 here and uh, if you look at H then I will have to do it is 5 here and if I do this will be 6.5 I can say 6.5 right and this is for the stoichiometric C 4 H 10 air mixture. So, then nu I can find out will be m dot uh, a divided by m dot f is nothing but your uh, 6.532 plus 79 divided by 21, 28 into 58 is equal to 15.38 right and which is uh, roughly ok, because the hydrocarbon generally it will be coming something around uh, you know around 15 right. So, uh, then uh, like we know T infinity, T infinity uh, is not given here you can take uh, basically uh, T infinity as something 298 Kelvin right I can take T, in, T infinity. So, therefore, if I say this is equation 1 I can uh, find from this I can find out the volumetric fuel flow rate can be determined from 
equation 1 as v dot f is nothing but your this will do h f ln 1 plus mu 1330 t infinity by t f right. So, uh, h f already given that is uh, basically 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter means we will have to say it is meter right, it will be 10 power to minus 2 right into uh, ln this is 1 plus 1 divided by 15.38 divided by 1330 into 298 divided by 2300. You will get something uh, 3.7 10 power t minus minus 5 meter cube per second. So, we will have to now find out basically heat release rate, right. So, how we will find out heat release rate? Heat of combustion rate, right? Heat release rate H R R I can write down rho of F, right, density into volumetric flow rate, right, into delta H of combustion, right. So, uh, the rho F I can find out. Uh, of course, the pressure right P by R U T into molecular weight of fuel right into uh, this is your V F and delta S C. So, therefore, I will just substitute these values. I am taking atmospheric pressure. I think uh, that is uh, not given in the question, but you will have to assume that is a ambient pressure uh, atmospheric pressure. So, therefore, pressure will be uh, 101.325 and the molecular weight of that uh, of the butane right will be what 58 right into uh, 8314 into 298 because this will be T infinity right. Uh, ambient uh, temperature you have to say that wherever it is coming and uh, already V dot F we know that is uh, 3.7 into 10 power to minus 5 into 45,000 right is equal to 46.95 kilowatt because this is already uh, 45,000 kilo uh, what right, kilo joule per uh, kg of that. So, therefore, you will get in, in kilowatt. So, now uh, basically uh, as I told that there will be uh, tube diameter is increased right and then uh, tube diameter is increased by D is increased by 25 percent and velocity V f is decreased by 25 percent right. Then you will have to look at basically how much the new uh, flame height right. For that you will have to evaluate basically new volumetric flow rate and if you look at the volumetric flow rate of fuel is nothing but your A of fuel port into this this is nothing but your pi by 4 d f square right uh, I can say this right into uh, v f right. So, if I look at this v f nu okay, will be equal to basically 1.25 right it will be increased by 25 percent diameter. So, square into it will be decreased by the velocity. So, I can write down uh, 0 0.75 into V f is not it or right the I can say may be old right old values. So, in implies I can write down V f new divided by V f old is nothing but your d f 
uh, new by d f old right square and v f new by v f old right that is all like and then this is uh, basically 1.25 right and this is a 1 you can divide that and then this will be like that right. So, if it is coming this is something coming as 4.3 into 10 power t minus 5 meter cube per second. Then when you put that thing what you will get is uh, this will be 3 8 ok 3 8. So, uh, therefore, h f we can determine the h f by using equation 1 right h f is equal to 1 3 3 0 v dot f of course, this will be new one we will be putting into t infinite by t f into l n 1 plus 1 by new right and I know all those values I will be putting that values into 4.38 10 power to minus 5 298 divided by 2300 ln 1 plus 15.38 you will get you will get something around uh, 11 point I think it will be little different 11 point maybe uh, 8 centimeter you will get ok right. So, uh, I mean what it indicates it indicates that the flame height is increased due to increase in basically what volumetric, volumetric flow rate right it is basically h f is and uh, of course, there is a increase in diameter right and uh, whereas, the uh, if when you increase the diameter uh, then what will happen the v f has to also decrease right of course, you provided the all the things, but here the flow rate is changing. So, therefore, h f is basically uh, is increase due to increase in volumetric flow rate of fuel ok. So, uh, with the using the simple formula one can get that of course, it is similar in nature to the phenomenological analysis what we had also seen, but when you do that this result determination of flame might by this method and the phenomenology there might be change in the actual number, but however, the trend looks to be similar that is the thing you should uh, keep in mind right. And uh, what we will be doing now, now we will be looking at uh, about some points which is known as smoke point right. And what do you mean by smoke point particularly it will be very important for, for the jet diffusion flame and also with the increase concern for the uh, emission this is very important. A smoke point is basically uh, is used to ascertain the tendency of any fuel to produce soot right. Suppose a, a, a fuel is sooty or not right one can determine of course, there is a various ways of doing it. One way is that you just take some certain amount of liquid fuel and go on heating it and see that like uh, what condition what temperature that is giving producing a suit right that is one but in our case we are talking about the jet diffusion flame so therefore we will be concerning about the uh, for the jet diffusion flame right so according to the asme standard the smoke point is the height of flame in mm in a standard burner means certain diameters you know is required without causing any smoke right if i consider a a burner a tube I will take and in this case I will be passing through certain amount of well flow rate and it will be there. So, then there will be a flame will be coming right 
and if I goes on increasing this uh, flow rate of fuel, then what will happen? Flame uh, height will be goes on increasing, right? Uh, if I will increase this thing, then flame, this is basically the flame. which will be increasing and then as you find out then it will be producing a large amount of soot because it is in quiescent atmosphere these are basically air which are quiescent atmosphere right and then the it will be start smoking right smoking means a lot of soot will be produced. Uh, that means we will have to find out what is the minimum flow rate of the fuel in which there is no smoke. In other words that is the critical flow rate at which the smoke will start uh, you know producing right. So, that we call it as a basically smoke point. So, uh, if you look at a figure here of course, this is taken uh, under the zero gravity condition right uh, used by the this uh, photograph is basically by the produced by NASA right and this is your jet flame as it goes on increasing the fuel flow rate I mean as you that as with increasing this the mass flow rate of fuel is increasing right. And as you go on you will see these are the soot is being formed start forming you know like these are the soot is open right soot being uh, being formed and then smoke it is very much smoky kind of thing. So, generally that height what is called as basically uh, a that means, when it will start uh, you know opening of these tips right and then because of soot is there, there will not be any flame you know it will be cooling the flame right because soot is lot of soots are being produced here there will be soot and these are the soot wing region large amount of soot will be formed here as a result that flame is not there it is quenching right and then it will be start all the soot will be going instead of oxidizing it is going up and that point where it will be coming this is basically known as smoke point right. <coughs> and uh, this depends on the kind of fuel you are using. It is basically alkanes and uh, propane, butane, heptane, octane you can see that this is for the critical uh, mass flow rate at which the smoke started producing ok. Smoke means a large amount of soot right opening of this steep and other thing. So, if you look at the propane is uh, becomes uh, propane smoke point is higher as compared to octane. What is the meaning of that? That means that octane uh, iso octane is more prone to the formation of the soot as compared to propane. Are you getting lower the value means? it is at very small flow rate started smoking right. That means, this fuel is a not good from the smoke point of point of view are you getting and similarly, the alkenes right is again the similar situations uh, for alkenes ethylene, propylene you know dakin you can look at it is of course, there is a little bit change here, uh, but it is in similar number right kind of things. So, uh, similarly alkynes these are the uh, kind of things the flow rate is being done aliphatic is having very low that means aliphatic is more prone to the smoke as compared to alkynes and uh, alkynes is more prone to soot than the alkenes and alkenes is more prone to soot than alkenes that is the general conclusion you can draw from this data right that you should keep in mind and uh, so, uh, let us now look at about the soot uh, formation how does because the smoke point is coming due to the soot formation. Now, we will be looking at how does the soot basically being formed in the jet diffusion flame or any other flame right. So, uh, and we had had a, had a question why diffusion flames are orange or yellow in color we told due to the formation of soot and uh, where is the location of the soot formation right where the soot being formed is it at the tip or is it the beginning or these are the questions we need to ask ourselves 
and whether it is a uh, because for that fuel side of reaction zone and uh, which will be there and gets consumed and it move into the oxidizing zone right. And uh, will all the soot particle get uh, consumed uh, in a in an oxidizing zone or not? That is the one question has to be asked. And if it is consumed, then you won't really find uh, the soot particles. Right? Soot particles form in the inception zone. May not be oxidized completely. Inception zone means where it will be initiated. And soot consumption depends on the type of fuel, and also the residence time the fuel uh, remains in the flame height within the flame height how much it will be remaining. So, that is also uh, dictate the soot uh, the life of the soot particle and uh, what is the soot wing it is basically the local extinction of flame at its tip leading to the formation of smoke. Keep in mind the smoke is formed that does not mean uh, smoke has not been formed in the jet division does not mean soots are not formed, soots are formed, but it is good enough to extinct the flame locally and then soot will be uh, getting uh, going out and flame extinction. The we will have to look at process of soot formation uh, basically uh, formation of precursor species or carbon nuclear will be there and then there will be particle inception particle will be formed and then there will be the surface growth and particle agglomeration will be there. So, with this uh, I will stop over in the next class we will be discussing about mechanism of soot formation. Thank you very much.